My name is Mark Reinhardt. I'm the founder of Whitehorse Laboratories. I started Whitehorse in 2004. I came from an EMS and a component manufacturing background personally. I was already in China with the component manufacturer when I opened Whitehorse Labs. Our process flow is set up similar to the AS6081. The first step is just to match every incoming receipt to an order. If we don't have an active order for the incoming receipt, it will be put into MRB until sales confirms with the customer what we're supposed to do with it. If we do have an active order, we'll go into the next step of processing. Documentation and packaging inspection. Um, we're matching up the delivery information to the customer's order. In general inspection, we're actually opening up the carrier to see if the packaging is intact. We take out the samples requested for testing and the balance of the parts are resealed and put into the EPA warehouse. If we're expecting a fast turn on, like we're doing inspection on a few pieces and then reship, we can put them in the dry box. Inspection results are fed directly into our operating system, which we call Pegasus. Once the samples are in the lab for inspection, the first process we always recommend is external visual inspection. We have six inspection stations set up. Each inspection station is identical. They have two screens. One screen is for analysis, the other screen is for entry directly into the system. All stations are set up with a microscope that goes up to 60 times magnification. Digital imaging is built into the microscope system and all parts are clearly inspected and those results log. We also do dimension verification and marking permanency and resistance to solvents testing as part of visual inspection. Once the inspection is complete, the reports come to our product analysis engineering team. Product analysis engineers review and approve the inspector results and will personally double check anything that looks um, inconsistent to them before issuing the report. If the product passes visual inspection, it will move on to the next process. So processes could include x-ray, where we're looking at is there a dye, is it a consistent size, orientation, location in the part, is the lead frame the same, are all the bond wires connected to where they're supposed to be, or the bond wire patterns are different. XRF, um, it's a material analysis. It shoots an ion beam and actually causes the target area to vibrate and different elements vibrate at a different frequency. And a spectrometer reads the vibrations to see which elements are in the target area. People usually think, oh, it's just like lead-free or Rojas testing, but we can also do plating thickness. We can tell you if it's a class one or a class two capacitor. We can tell you if there's contamination on the part through XRF. If it passes through inspection and we are doing electrical tests, this is our electrical test engineering team. Each test station is set up for a different type of testing. Pretty basic testing would be pin verification. We will test 100% of the pins simultaneously to look for opens and shorts. This is our digital based testing. So devices that are already set up to respond to a program. This is our JTAG's testing station. Roger writes a program in the dialect that only that Xilinx part number will speak to make sure that the COM ports respond correctly. The device does not respond or it responds incorrectly. We know we've got a failure at best, counterfeit at worst. This is our passive discrete testing capacitors, resistors, transformers are tested at this station. Top of the line, Agilent Keysight test system, very high resolution, very high accuracy to test all specified parameters on the passive devices. This is our TCU. This TCU is used for control of the temperature of the device while it's being tested from negative 80 to positive 225 degrees centigrade to see if certain devices are actually automotive, industrial, or aerospace or military grade. This is a functional testing area. So this is our analog, linear, mixed signal devices. We've got at least seven different types of equipment. We combine those in different combinations depending on the requirements of the part to provide the inputs according to the manufacturer's specifications and then measure the output to make sure it is within the manufacturer's specifications. This is our test station for active discretes, which are transistors, diodes, MOSFETs, IGBT modules. Our ATE system tests all of those parameters at the same time. It's a simultaneous test for all the specified DC parameters. Um, it's very fast and we have a range of up to 2,000 volts and 100 amps. This area is where we're doing all of our high voltage testing. We put high end voltage in it to see if the device will actually crack. Some kind of it's called dielectric hot pot resistance to voltage. That device there is a curve tracer. 
This is a reflow simulator. This is a reflow oven. This simulates a pick and place line, but in a static um, bench top unit. So we're doing solderability testing using the reflow simulation. Method. So devices like BGAs, we cannot do a dip and look with those. Those need to be done through a reflow simulation. And this duplicates the reflow profile um, required for the JDEX standard to see if the solder balls and the solder paste actually wet together properly within the right temperature. If you ask production engineers, this is the type of solderability test they like because this simulates how they use it in their own production environment. All the non-destructive testing is done in the EPA. Destructive testing we will do outside of the EPA. So we have two different um, designated areas for different processing. This is our corrosive material um, handling. This is decapsulation and heated chemical testing. This is also destructive testing, but this is solderability testing cross-section. Uh, we also do our dye analysis from decal. This microscope system is up to 5,000 times magnification. It has 3D digital imaging so we can actually map 100% coverage of the dye area. We can also do uh, failure analysis and very high magnification, high resolution imaging with that system. And then we do cross-section. This is the saw to actually cut the device in half and we have a polisher and grinder get it down to a mirror finish, and then we can use it with a microscope with no distortion of the surface area. Pass or fail, we, we ship them back. If they fail, we normally have to return them to the supplier. Uh, if they pass, we're shipping a final destination. So this is our packaging station. Uh, we have retaping stations. These are tray and tube repackaging station, vacuum seal, tray strapping tube sealing, all the repackaging area, and plenty of room for staging because we're dealing with very, very high volume. And then into final packaging. We don't handle the boxes inside, so we reunite the samples that we completed with the balance of the parts in the EPA. Sealed carriers go into ship prep to box and label and prepare the shipping documentation for going to wherever it is that they need to be around the world.